Peace. MC Sean Love. Yeah, so I was just gonna take y'all with me for a minute when I go on a little hike to the uh, the free library, right? In my town, which, you know, I talk a lot of shit, but in my town, one of the things that they really do right is they got a free library where, you know, you ever cleaning out your books? You ever want to grab an extra book for your kid or something? Free library is always around the corner. So I'm going to take y'all on a little walk with me while I do uh, today's daily mathematics. It's kind of windy out this bitch. Yeah. So, you know, really... Anything that I got to say today is about positivity, right? So, because I was, uh, I, I, I found myself tasked this afternoon, like I, like I am many times, taking negative uh, situations and making it a positive, right? Sorry, man, I'm not going to fuck with y'all this whole time with this big ass pile of books balanced up. So, yeah, beautiful day out. And uh, I took a negative negative exchange with somebody and I, I turned that into a positive right because uh, essentially one question you have when you're talking about adding on something or uh, contributing an idea right or uh, making what you know manifest and expressing yourself you're adding wisdom to your cipher right you know whatever cipher you're a part of at that moment especially if you're interacting with others and, uh, you know, so that goes for me all day long, whether it's with me and my employees, whether it's with me and the family, me and friends, me and other uh, associates and people I build with. I I'm always mindful about how I'm, how I'm expressing my foundation, which is knowledge, in that cipher, right? If you look at, uh, if you look at the 20th degree, you know, the, the wisdom cipher in uh, the 1 to 40, it says, what is the prescribed law of Islam, a said person of that ability? And the answer is, that the civilized person is held responsible for the uncivilized and must be punished by the nation of Islam. What does that mean, right? Well, I've got the choices all day long to deal with these motherfuckers in a way that's kind of soft, right? Like, just kind of like, oh, this is, because I'm out in the Bay Area now, I'm a Jersey boy, man. And I, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Nothing's different. Genders are the same. Yeah, high five. You know, and that would be a lot easier. You know, if you if you take a look at what I do, you'll notice that, like, first of all, like, you know, you got all this fe feminist stuff. I've been walking around today and driving around, and I'm watching grown-ass men. They're they're working. They're spending their afternoon in a goddamn hole in the ground. There's no there's no women in the hole with them. There's no women wearing the jackets trucking around in the street. And I'm not saying women can't or women shouldn't. But I'm saying we're still still dealing with a reality where when I go go about my day to day, I see a lot of men in these positions that are difficult, sometimes without dignity, and uh, you know that's 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 the grand majority of people I see. Yeah. So there's sorry phone call. So yeah, there's a lot of ideas that are floating around out here, not just floating around, but enforced socially on people that uh, that don't line up with the truth. You know, uh, and and you know this is a hotbed where I'm at for this kind of stuff, and so you know. When I'm putting wisdom out in a cipher, I make sure that if you look at the 20th letter in our supreme alphabet, it's truth or square, right? So I, I you know, I know it's going to be a rough ride unless I just shut the fuck up. But I'm willing to stand there on that square of truth. A lot of the people that I'm talking about don't really have a tolerance uh, for breaking down ideas or even having, you know, uh, you know, people out there that don't completely agree with everything about the way that they're expressing what they think they know or what they believe, right? Uh, you know, they don't have a tolerance for that. It's not welcome. Uh, so when you're trying to add wisdom to a cipher out here, good fucking luck, man. Uh, but, you know, what I will say is that uh, a lot of that can be perceived as negative. You know, my complaints about this stuff. But, you know, so, so sorry I've wounded you. You know, so if I'm saying something negative, I would challenge anybody to turn that into a positive, right? Uh, let me give you an example of that, right? I bumped into a group of people that were kind of, uh, you know, like cultural warriors for... Uh, I guess the LGBTQ other community, right? Which, you know, and like like that being said, I, I kind of want to say that also being a hair cutter for many years, I had a lot of people that work with me in the hair salons and barber shops that were gay, right? Big fucking deal, man. If it was a cool person, somebody maybe when I was younger helped me learn a tip or two about doing my job, you know, everybody goes out, you know, has drinks, 
or something after work. I just don't care, man. I just don't care. I have no animosity in my heart for a person like that. But when you start trying to ask me to talk a different way, you know, when you start asking me to think a different way, when you start asking me to turn away from everything I know about basic biology, you know, then you're asking me to step off of my square of truth. I got fucking Atlas shrugged in this bitch. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here. It's not in great condition, but anybody that's a teacher could always use another copy of this, uh, Catcher in the Rye. So anyway, you're putting me in a situation of servitude because I've got to serve your interests, right? When I reflect on science or any of the data that I know about, about the physical world, I've got to serve your interests. And that's not something I'm willing to do, right? And that attitude is something that's not, it's, it's punishable out here to have an attitude like that. To be, to come in love, but in understanding and compassion, but still say, hey, I don't agree because X, Y, Z. That's not an attitude that's accepted. And I think it's super unhealthy, you know, for people to act like this. Uh, so anyway, my, my, uh, my response to that is just to double down, you know? I will, I'll tell, I'll say, oh, yep, blue sky right over there. Uh-huh, palm trees, motherfuckers, you know? Uh, you know, just tell the truth in all these situations and, and not be afraid of that. Because, uh, you know, whether or not an observer, you know, likes your position, if, you, if you're standing with the truth, and I, I firmly believe that, uh, you know, so, if you're, so even if an observer doesn't like the way you're handling something or, or what you're explaining, what you're saying, right? If you're standing on your square of truth, then you, know, you, can, you can feel confident that, that you, are, you are with what is right and just. Uh, it brings me to, uh, to a crazy dynamic. I, I saw uh, in this documentary a couple weeks ago or a week ago, and uh, you know, I went and I looked into the dynamic and I actually read about it some more, and it's pretty fascinating. And it, and it has a lot to do with, uh, with truth, right? Uh, because I think when a lot of these lies kind of pop up, like these lies about society, like men and, for example, I'm with my child and I've got to have another parent tell, oh, you can be whatever you want, boy, girl, because that's the attitude. Adults talk this way around kids, right? So, uh, but that's not true, right? So when I, when I heard about this dynamic, you know, and I know from the distant past I must have read about it, but I was reminded of it, right? It's interesting. One of them is called, uh, one of the side of the dynamic, one side of the coin, right? It's called imposter syndrome. And that's something that I believe I have to a degree. And many people I know have to a degree, uh, even very, very well studied people. And that imposter sy syndrome is, is the feeling that no matter what you read, no matter what you understand, no matter how much you dialogue, you always have this anxiety that you don't quite know. You're not quite an expert on whatever subject it is, right? And that, that not just when we're talking about knowledge itself, but just across the board in all subjects, you know, as a teacher, as a business owner, I always have that little slight feeling of inadequacy. And the reason is, is because that's the reality of the situation. I'm never gonna know enough, right? So having that imposter syndrome, right? Have that imposter syndrome set you out on a pathway in life where you're always open to learning, right? You're always open to learning because you're never convinced you know it all. You never feel completely adequate. Sounds like a negative, but the results of feeling that way turns into quite a positive, right? Then you look at the other side of that coin, and I believe that was called dining, uh, dining Kruger uh, effect. Dining Kruger effect. And if you look that up, that's like the polar opposite of it, right? It's uh, people that uh, they believe themselves to be experts. They have all the confidence uh, that, that comes with confidence uh, and knowledge and background, but they just can't cut the mustard, man. They just can't do it right. And it's obvious to everybody around them. However, however, they insist through and through that they're experts, you know, no matter what outside stimuli is telling them different, right? And that, of course, is called dining Kruger effect. Uh, and if you look at that, I guess it seems positive because it makes a person confident. Maybe it makes a person engage more often, right? So, uh, you know, more opportunities for discussions arise because of their confidence. But it's actually quite negative because that positions a person where they're never learning because they think they've already, they, they already think they know it all. So whenever they enter a situation, it's not about what they can learn, it's about what they can fucking say, right? Okay, so they're here. And you know, they're not looking to learn, so they're never gonna get any higher. They might even kind of pitter-patter down here a little bit because they're so busy defending shit they said that was incorrect that it just kind of pumps their knowledge level down to oblivion, their, their usefulness, right? And then you take the other person with the imposter syndrome. They might be all the way up here, 
but they kind of see themselves as down here. They have a little bit of that anxiety. So what are they doing? They're looking to get knowledge everywhere they go, everywhere they go. So that amount of knowledge they actually do have is growing and growing and growing. You take turn a negative into a positive, you know? There's some, uh, <laughs> there's a whole philosophy. These great yogis used to spend their whole lives uh, imagining that a sword was suspended above their head by spider webs, right? And what's the lesson there? I think that it's, uh, the reality is we're gonna die, right? So, you know, if you go through life trying to do every last little thing in your ability to turn your head away from reality, uh, it's gonna be a miserable existence as opposed to just acceptance. I'm living like I'm gonna die any moment because it's gonna happen. Maybe not the next moment, maybe not the moment after that, but it's gonna happen. And maybe those moments, you don't know, right? Because people had died when they were walking in their neighborhood. People had died uh, when they were eating breakfast. People had died when they were watching television. People had died doing the shit that I do every single day. People have died when they run. People have died when they work out. People have died at work. So every single day I put myself in a situation where there's a sword above my head and I could be dying in bed, right? So, you know, I think taking that negative and turning that into a positive is a, is, a, is, a, is a position of strength that you put yourself in. And I think the key to doing that a lot of the time is being humble, is being humble. And, uh, and that's kind of an attitude I think it's hard to learn from a book. You gotta learn that from life, right? Uh, you know, having some humility. So anyway, uh, that's just kind of what I, you know, I, I don't like to go into these builds, you know, too formally, man, because this is like the couple of minutes I get away from my responsibilities every day. So hopefully something I said in there uh, had some usefulness for you, or at least you enjoyed the talk. All right, y'all. Peace.